Hi, my name is Angel Stahlhunter, and I'm an assistant professor of sociology and criminology at Capital University. I'm also an advocate for and adopter of open educational resources, and I've been using OERs in my classroom since 2017. Today, I want to talk about an aspect of open education that has been a key topic of conversation in higher ed over the past several years. Open generative artificial intelligence. But I want to approach this topic through the lens of the faculty-student relationship. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify connections between OpenAI and evidence-based teaching and learning strategies and evaluate how AI might impact the faculty-student relationship in a positive way. Let's get started. To ensure that we're all on the same page, let me pause for a moment and provide some background information. Um, as is emphasized later in this presentation, I am not an expert in AI. In fact, I am very new to generative AI. That said, um, AI is not a new concept. It has been around, um, the word has been used since as early as the 1950s. What has changed though is the access quality and usage um, through the work of OpenAI, especially since November, uh, November of 2022. I'm going to use the, gener the definition of generative AI from Leem et al.'s 2023 paper entitled Generative AI and the Future of Education. Leem and colleagues identify three components of generative AI. The first is uh, that it is a deep learning model, and that deep learning model generates human-like content, and that human-like content um, uh, is a response to complex and varied prompts. I also want to emphasize that even though it's titled OpenAI, not all features of various OpenAI platforms such as ChatGPT or BARD are entirely free. Um, there are elements of the platform that are behind paywalls, which is a conversation for future uh, presentations. Like many of my colleagues, um, over the past about year and a half, I have been having moments of questioning what effective teaching looks like in the age of open AI. And so I turned to the literature, and as I looked through the literature on open AI, and I had conversations with other faculty members and attended conferences, two predominant views of AI seem to emerge. One view or camp, I should say, is the AI is bad camp, and this would be the literature, the presentations, the colleagues who are focusing on how, how do I detect it, how do I police it, how do I prevent it, how do I make sure that learning is happening in spite of AI. The other camp is the more, I'm gonna simplify here and say the AI is good camp. That is the literature, the colleagues who are saying, how do I embrace AI? AI is here to stay. What does it look like to be innovative and to use AI in a way that it was going to promote effective teaching and learning? And while I appreciate both of these perspectives, I think that this bad, good dichotomy is problematic and that perhaps there is a third question that we should be asking in terms of AI usage. That third question, that third perspective or camp for me is how does AI impact the student-teacher relationship? And I believe that we have a moment to have that teacher-student relationship um, be impacted in a positive way and hearkening back to some of the work of folks like Pablo Ferrier or Bell Hooks, we have a moment to decolonize education. We have a moment to really think about power relationships in that student-teacher relationship. And um, that moment was created in part by OpenAI. So as I look at this question of how does AI impact the student-teacher relationship, I um, am encouraged in, in two ways, and I want to talk about those two ways. 
The first element of the student-teacher relationship that I think AI has caused us to pause and reflect upon is that of our pedagogy and the way that our pedagogy is being perceived by students. And so in the scholarship of teaching and learning literature, um, concepts such as alignment, transparency, and metacognition are very prominent. So a good course is a course that is designed in such a way that there are measurable learning outcomes and that those learning outcomes align with our modes of assessment. So the exams, the papers, the assignments, the activities, they all assess the degree to which we have met the outcomes that we say um, that our course is supposed to meet. And as we um, look at ChatGPT or other forms of open AI, we can start to ask questions. Where does AI fit into students' abilities to meet those learning outcomes? And furthermore, have we made it clear to students what the learning outcomes are? Or do we have assignments that can easily be completed with the use of generative AI and the students may or may not know that they whether or not they've met that learning outcome. They may not even know or realize what those learning outcomes are. I'll give you a very concrete example. I taught social theory this past semester. And in that course, we read a lot and we read a lot of difficult text. I recently learned that generative AI is very good at taking long, complicated text and summarizing it efficiently and quickly. So if my learning outcome is only that students understand the basic tenets of theory and can apply theory, then why not have them use the generative AI in order to um, summarize these complicated text but I also have a learning outcome, and the reason why I have them read difficult text is to develop that skill of being able to wade through hard material, to pull out the important pieces, and to do um, that work on, on their own without the assistance of other tools. But did I make that learning outcome clear? Did I make that as a skill? And then did I really facilitate the development of that skill? Or did I only encourage students, for example, um, through assignments that did not require the deep reading um, to actually develop that skill? A third aspect of good pedagogy is this idea of um, metacognition. So how can we use AI to help students think about their thinking? So a couple of ways that I have approached this in class is uh, asking students to look at papers written by ChatGPT and asking them to think about what what is it that ChatGPT is doing versus what they would do in the process of writing a paper. I've asked students to reflect on whether they're using active or passive studying techniques. What are um, ways that ChatGPT could be advantageous to facilitating more active study techniques. For example, creating questions in ChatGPT and then seeing if they could answer those questions. Beyond just critically reflecting on our pedagogy, I think we have a moment to think deeply about relationship transformation within the classroom. So we've moved off the, the stage as the sage, and we have become the guide on the side. However, as the guide on the side, we're still possessing the power. What does it look like to not possess that power? What does it look like to be vulnerable in front of our students? So I would argue when we adopt the AI as bad model, we're positioned as faculty members to be the victims of cheating. When we adopt the AI as good model, as faculty members, we're positioned to be customer service representatives, adapting only to the perceived demands of our consumers. What if instead we focused on the role of AI in our learning community? So this idea for this presentation came from learning from my students about AI. As I listened and asked questions, I started to learn more, but more importantly, my students felt heard. One key advantage of becoming the learner is that we can model learning for our students. 
Research demonstrates that there are differences between expert and novice learners. Expert learners are better at knowing what they know, what they don't know, asking for clarification, and knowing when they need to revisit a concept. By becoming a learner, the teacher develops empathy for the student as well as reduces the gap between the teacher and the student. So the question I pose here is what could students teach professors about AI usage? Could the student in fact be the expert on the tool and the teacher be the expert on the content and when we combine those two expertise, we embrace this true collaboration within the classroom setting. Critical pedagogy encourages students to question the status quo, to deconstruct economies, and remove hierarchies within the classroom. I believe that we are at a moment where we have the opportunity to empower students um, and to develop a different level of trust when we involve students in the process of helping us to set expectations around AI usage and also allowing them to show us what is the realm of possibilities for this new tool. What do they need to know? What do they not need to know? And helping them to know how to figure out what it is that they know and what they don't need to know. Obviously, this presentation is just scratching the surface. This is a very rough and new idea. So I had a couple of questions that I thought might be interesting to continue in Discord the conversation about or the conversation on. So one, does the guide on the side analogy still fit in the age of open AI? How do educators communicate their value in the age of open AI? And what is the relationship between faculty and industry, especially faculty teaching in uh, these more traditional liberal arts disciplines, um, I'd include my own in sociology, um, that offer a variety of career paths? So I look forward to continuing this conversation in Discord, and thank you for letting me be part of this conference.